Welcome to our lecture online. Another way in which we can define whether or not or find whether or not a vector field has a curl by taking the del operator and multiplying times the vector field via the cross product, we can play this kind of game. Let's say, for example, that this represents a current, like a river. And on this side, the river flows this direction, and this side, the river flows in this direction. Starting from the origin, if I start moving outward, let's say on a small little boat, will I go straight or will I start curving to the side? And of course, if that was a current, you can see the farther out I go, the more I get pushed by the stream. So I can see that, and let me get a red color, that if I were to go from the origin straight out this way in the negative x direction, I would start curling in this direction. Same if I move in the positive x direction, I would start curling in this direction. So that indicates there's a curl associated with that vector field. Now, of course, if I travel in the positive y direction, I would not deviate from my path. And if I travel in the negative y direction, I would not deviate from my path. So it only happens if I change, if I change direction in the x direction rather than the y direction. But in this case, it doesn't matter what direction I travel in. If this was a, a, a current and this was like a river, it would kind of go around in a circle. Then no matter which way I'd set out, I would always curve away like this, if I go this way, I would curve away like this. If I go this way, I would curve away like this. No matter what direction I would set out from the origin, you could see that my path would be deviated by the current. And so I expect a larger curl here and a smaller curl there. Now notice that we have defined the vector fields here using this as V1 and this as V2. So let's go ahead and calculate the curl, which is done this way. We take the del operator, we multiply times the vector via the cross product, and that's the way we do that. So let me show you what that looks like with these two examples. So first of all, we're going to take the del operator and multiply times vector one. So this is equal to, we get the x, the y, and the z unit vectors, like this. The partial derivative with respect to x, the partial derivative with respect to y, the partial derivative with respect to z. And now what we need here is the x, y, and z components of the vector, so minus y, x and 0. And now we're ready to take that cross product. So this would be equal to the x unit vector times, notice that I cover up this column and this row, I have those four elements left. So it's the partial with respect to y of 0. So the partial with respect to y of 0 minus the partial with respect to z of x. And then I have minus the y unit vector times, and I would take the partial of x with respect to 0, the partial of x with respect to 0, minus the partial of z with respect to z, respect to negative y. And notice, if you look at that, both of those are going to be 0, which is what you would expect, because you only expect a z component to survive. So plus the z unit vector times, in this case, we have the partial of x, with respect to x, the partial with respect to x of x, minus the partial with respect to y of negative y. And then you see there is a z term surviving here. So this would be equal to 0 in the x direction, plus 0 in the y direction, and then plus, that would be 1, and that would be negative times the negative 1, which is 1, 1 plus 1, which is 2 in the z direction, and that would be the curl caused by vector 1. So it's 2 times z direction. So in essence, you can say this is simply 2 in the z direction. All right, now we'll do the same for this vector here. So we take the divergence, not the divergence, but we take the curl, or we take the del operator, and we multiply it times v1, up oh, v2, not v1, but v2. And so that will look as follows. This is x unit vector, y unit vector, z unit vector, the partial with respect to x, the partial with respect to y, and the partial derivative with respect to z. And then the x, y, and z components, there's 0 for the x component, x for the y component, and 0 for the z component. And let's see what that is equal to. So this is equal to x unit vector times the partial with respect to y of 0, it's this times this, minus this times this, the partial with respect to z of x. And notice just like we expected, that will be equal to 0, minus the y unit vector times the partial with respect to x of 0, 
minus the partial with respect to z of 0 as well. So that's going to be equal to 0. And there's our puppy again trying to cough. It's called the kennel cough, but she's doing much better. It may not seem like it, but she's doing pretty good. All right, so now we have plus the z component times the partial with respect to x of x minus the partial with respect to y of 0. And notice we have one surviving term, so this is equal to this is equal to 1, so 1 times z unit vector, which is equal to the del operator multiplied times v2. And of course, that will be the curl of the second vector function. Notice it's not as big as a curl because you only get a change in the vector field when you change when you move in the x direction, not when you move in the y direction. Here we get a change in the vector field when you move both in the x and the y direction. And therefore, you have a bigger curl here and a smaller curl there. And that is how it's done.